This is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Okay, let's start with the base. I'm using the airbrush to apply the first base coat fast and swiftly. You can do this with a brush as well. Try to reach all those money with a dark cold green, but you don't need maximum opacity on the back, because that is our shadowy part. On the front, you can go for maximum opacity, because that is going to be the brightest part of the miniature. Let's add some Death World Forest to the angel green and paint the banknotes with this color. Dilute the paint when painting the money on the back, so that area will stay darker. Papa Laborts painted some horizontal lines on the stacks, so it creates an effect that the money is made of separate sheets of paper, not just a solid block of green. Creating texture always adds some extra detail, which makes the base more interesting. I paint the sleeves on the stacks, leaving a little part of them darker, and I glaze over them to smooth out the transition between the colors. As I reach the money at the back, I'm diluting the paint more to a thinner consistency, so it won't be as opaque. I will continue with this process for the rest of the base. Sometimes it's nice to play with the consistency rather than mixing a little bit darker green, but if that's something that you are more comfortable doing, uh, then just go ahead and mix a little bit of angel green to the ogreen camo. Now with pure ogreen camo we paint the details on the money. Use the base layer consistency and try to paint a binding around the banknotes with two dots on both sides. This is a challenge of patience, but patience is almost the biggest part when painting miniatures. So take your time and have fun! Use a brush with a nice tip so it will be much easier to paint these little details. For the back, I use a mix of Ogreen Camo and Death World Forest to paint the same details. After that, I highlight the sleeves, mostly the sides that face towards the edge of the base. I do some edge highlights as well. Try to be careful with that not to paint stripes on the back banknotes while doing the edge highlights, or I will slap on your tiny hand. Also, I continue to highlight the side of the stacks with some thin horizontal lines. Apply more of these lines on the front and less on the back, or use a darker mixture we used previously, so you can avoid highlighting it too much. Now, to enhance the main light source in the front, I'm using the airbrush to create a filler with a bit of orange mixed into the Dead World Forest. This will create a warmer spot on the base and work towards our focal point, which is the character sitting on the money pile. I only do this on the front and cover around 30% of the area. Make sure you angle your airbrush in a way that only the top part of the banknotes receive this glaze. Be very gentle, we only need a little bit of this glaze, otherwise it's going to be too harsh and opaque and we're going to lose some detail. Ok, let's paint the skin with Blood River Flash. We paint the ribs with this color as well. I'm using thin layers, so it will be easier to blend in this color. I apply more layers on the cheeks and forehead, nose and chin, because these are the major highlight zones on the face. Even an undead one. It's more like a skull with some flesh on it. No glaze is required, uh, in Papa Laborte's opinion, because Deadpool doesn't have a smooth skin alive, so this rotten chart flesh could use some roughness. Using the same consistency, I mix some Talar sand to the Blood River Flash and sketch out the highlights on the skin. I'm leaving a bigger shadowy part on the left side under the cheekbones, and since we painted the base's right side more bright, that means that the light source will light up more of the left side of the miniature. Try to leave a tiny line of Blood River Flash between the teeth and the, I would say, upper lips, but uh, clearly that non-existent, so the area where the upper lip should be. 
This will increase the definition and cleanliness so we can appreciate the details more. Oh, and don't forget about Bob, like uh, Papa Labors did, so paint him the same way as uh, Deadpool. Let's paint the eyes with ivory. You know guys, this is the part that I usually can't record because Papa Labors' old eyes need some help and when I'm painting for the camera the mini is like uh, 20 cm away from my eyes. Uh, no, it's actually it's more like 40 cm which is a bit too much, so I had to move it closer uh, and move it out of frame. For the unmasked eye, I glaze some fluorescent orange over the eyeball to create that faint glowy eye effect the character has on the player card. Now with pure talent sand, I reduce the previously highlighted areas of the face even more. As you can see, I don't really apply highlights on the left side of the jaw, because the light swords come from the other side, that the area which should create a drop shadow. I know it's not an easy concept to create highlights from a non-existent light source, but uh, that's the part of mini painting. Let's mix some decomposed flesh to the talent sand and paint those teeth while reducing the other highlight areas. Give a tiny bit of blood river flesh between the teeth so they will look nice and crispy like granny's toast. We don't paint the teeth with an off-white because uh, that is Mickey Mouse. Like all the previous heroes we painted from the core box, their teeth are rotten and dirty, so this color makes perfect sense. Uh, look at some Walking Dead reference. Do you see a zombie with white teeth? Nope, there are none. By the way, is this show still on? I stopped watching when the poorly animated CGI tiger was a thing. Anywho, only use a tiny bit of this color for the highlights, we don't want to lose our previous layers. Use it under the eyes, but really just a little bit, and on the mouth, and on the chin. And as I said, don't forget about Bob. I'm using Blood River Flash for his teeth as well, and the same highlight colors are used for that poor skin. Lastly, with pure decomposed flesh, we push the contrast a bit more on the skin, focusing on the right side of the chin and mouth, and glaze it over a tiny bit of the cheeks. Uh, with that, the skin is done. Ok, moving on to the suit's red part. I applied two thin layers of word barrels red. This is a very dark red, probably with some purple in it, a really rich and deep red color. Only leave the extreme shadows black, like uh, between the abs or under the arms and the legs. Uh, this paint covers really well, so maybe you only need one coat, but I like to apply more than one thin coat to have a smooth finish. over those black parts with a more diluted consistency, like uh, skin milk, and pull the paint from the dark parts to the bright ones. Offload your brush on a paper towel when painting with glazes, otherwise the paint going to pull in the crevices and it will ruin the shadowy parts. And uh, you may have guessed, I will slap on your tiny hand. Always use the same brush motion, so your gradient will be smooth as a granny's butt cheek. Let's mix some Evil Sun Scarlet to the Word Barrels Red. This is Papa Laborts' favorite red, and if you saw some of my previous videos, I use it a lot because it is so vibrant and covers so well. Ok, aim for the top part of the folds and try to use thin layers so this new color will blend in on its own. Since these two colors so close to each other on the color wheel, like uh, Granny Laborts and her pack of cigarettes. Aria and the head can receive bigger highlights, because that's where we would like to create our focal point. Usually I use the highlight reference for the highlights, but this time I would like to paint this mini as the artist did on the Kickstarter page. I don't know if uh, it was Ruben Martinez who did the paint job or a different artist from uh, Big Child Creatives, but it's an outstanding work. So you can say that this time Papa Labor's making an artist. <laughs> Now let's 
let's cover the 90% of the previous layer with few reverse and scarlet. Same thin layers like we used before. See how our red suit becomes more vibrant and saturated red with each layer. It looks so silky smooth like Renny's butt cheek. Since we build up our layers with a thin consistency, we don't need to glaze, so it's a bit faster this way. And we don't sacrifice that smooth finish, which is very important because this cloth is pretty smooth and not uh, some uh, rough textile. By the way guys, if any one of you follow these tutorials, please share your work with Papala Boards on Instagram or Facebook. The links are in the video description. Next, I used White Rider Red and increased the values using stapling. I gradually decreased the highlight areas and really aim for the top part of the pecs, abs and knee. On the mask, keep increasing the highlights towards the face. If you are not familiar with stapling, you basically create teeny tiny dots around the area you'd like to blend. It's really bad for your brushes tip, so don't use your fancy pants uh, sable brushes. Use some cheaper brushes but with a good tip uh, and this also creates a bit of texture it makes blending the colors so much easier and uh, as granny Laborde said life is hard that it is so we want to make it easier when we can now tell me where did you hide my cigarettes she always said that so listen to her and use everything in our tool belt to make silky smooth blends. I'm not saying everything needs to be smooth, it's nice to have some contrast in texture, but this suit look nicer with smooth gradients. Like uh, remember the Iron Man tutorial guys? On the Laborts channel? How cool and helpful that tutorial was, right? Right? And compare that armor to this suit. The armor is way rougher because it's beaten up metal. This suit is a different material. Maybe it's a bit too shiny for this torn apart state, but Papa Labors prefers it this way. For the final highlights, I mix some yellow to the Wild Rider Red. This will create an orange highlight and since we have a nice orange hue on the front of the money pile, it makes sense to make the final highlights have some orange hue to them as well, so this will create a harmonic and integrated look to our paint job. For the rubber parts of the suit, I mixed a little bit of black to the neutral grey and highlighted 60% of the black parts. I'm using thin layers again and glaze over some parts if I need to blend in the color more. Uh, these parts of the suit I guess it's made out of rubber, so it's a smooth surface. If you cover more than 60% of the black parts, your mid-tone will be grey. If you'd like to achieve that, that's great, but if you listen to Papa Laborts, you should end up with something that actually looks like black, uh, like Granny's feet, because she has the words uh, circulation. I should probably take her to the hospital. bit of a downside using black primers and get rid of the black parts using some colors you realize you skip some detail here and there so I thought that on the shoulder there is an awful mold line it turns out it's just a tear in the suit so and some uh, skin shows through same goes for the right knee so I painted these parts just as I painted the rest of the skin another fix is the hands I thought they were black, but uh, turns out they are red as the rest of the suit. A little trick on uh, highlighting hands is to create a gradient on each finger, but only go as far as the second brightest highlight on those parts, and especially on the parts that are face toward our light source.
After that, I retouch the black parts, where I thought I went a bit too far with the grey layer and glaze some black to mute those highlights and painted the swords with the black and neutral grey mixture we used before. Reduce the highlight areas inside the grey layer of the rubber parts with neutral grey. This way we have the same amount of black on those parts and covering half of the grey parts will make a bit of a contrast. more or less done for now, so I covered all the leather parts with a few thin layers of Blood River flesh. After that I add some white rider to the Blood River flesh and highlight all the leather pouches and straps, covering 70% of the surface and following the shapes with the highlights. White rider red helps to create this reddish oil leather look. I use thin layers here as well and try to add more layers around the edges. If you need a bit of help with the small pouches, think about them like small squares. Since they are very small, we can only create a small gradient on the surface and paint more around the edges. Adding a bit of talent sand to the mix, I do some edge highlights on the straps and pouches. If you don't want to do continuous lines, then break them up uh, here and there and it will create a more weathered look for those parts. If the edge highlights get a bit too wide, then just fix them with the previous color we used. Now it's time for the NMM. If you didn't have any problems following the previous steps, this should be a piece of cake. Papa Labors believes in you. I sketch the main highlights with light grey and uh, do some edge highlights as well. The edge highlights make the blade look like it has a sharp edge. After I'm done with that, I start to blend in this higher value grey using some glazes. I don't bother painting the sides of the blade that are really hard to preach. We are not painting for a competition, Papa Labor just want to have some nice minis to play with. I fixed the side of the blade and the back because I wasn't happy with the highlight placement there with the black and neutral grey mixture. So this part, I realized I left a little bit of the mask black, which is actually red. So I fixed it using the same highlight colors. You can start with Evil Sun Scarlet, since it's such a small piece, more than three highlight colors won't be visible. Then I mix some Ivory to the light gray and reduce the highlight areas on the blade with a thin consistency. Papa Labors really encourages you guys to experiment with different consistencies and understand how different dilutions behave. It will help your blending skill so much. If you're having a hard time painting an MM or OSL, this is one of the most important foundations to understand. Now for the cross guards and the pummels, I use the same mindset as for the pouches. These are little rectangles, so I make a gradient on the sides and edge highlight them. So I fixed the blade with neutral grey next to the edge with a glaze consistency. I didn't want to lose the edge highlight, but I noticed on the Kickstarter paint job there is a darker line going all the way down on the blade, creating more planes on that narrow part, and uh, uh, this is really cool. It adds a really nice touch to it. Uh, also created tiny dots of light with light grey on the mask rubber part, so it made it more shiny. And uh, lastly I blacklined the part between the teeth and the mouth with the uh, blood river flesh, uh, because I lost some definition when, uh, when I was painting the teeth. 
Here I pre-blacklined uh, the bad metal parts. This will increase the definition and cleanliness in a great way in the further steps. You can blackline later too, but I think it's easier to do it now. After that, Papa Labors covers every belt buckle and the rivets using a base layer consistency. Try to keep a little bit of black line around the buckles. It's not easy since it's really small, but I'm sure you will manage because Papa Labors believes in you. If you fail, that's no biggie, but I will slap on your tiny hand. Now let's highlight with light grey, aiming for the top half of the surfaces. On the belt buckle, I highlight the right side and a little bit of the bottom half of the buckle's rim. Push the contrast with light grey on the top parts of these little metal parts. Let's mix a bit of light grey to the ivory and reduce the previous highlight areas a bit more. I know the surface is super tiny, so use some magnifying glasses or lamp uh, that will help your eyes. Papa Labors is using a magnifying lamp all the time because I'm old and my vision is not as great as it was. Let's get back to Bob and uh, cover his mask with angel green. Add some Death World Forest and the Demonic Yellow and highlight the top part of the skull and add some highlights to the eyebrows as well. I build up the opacity of the layers slowly so they blend in easily. Add more yellow to the mixture for the final highlights and follow the previous highlight placement with reduced areas. Use the same brush motion if you would glaze this layer. Papa Labors cover the lens of the mask with Zamesi Desert using a base layer consistency. After that I painted a small reflection on the lower part of the lens with light grey. Then I wanted to add the brighter reflection to the top part and used ice yellow, but uh, that wasn't bright enough, so I used ivory. But in hindsight, uh, white would be the perfect choice for that. I wasn't really happy with the sword uh, that he's holding in his hand, so I pushed the contrast a bit with glazing some ivory on the top part as a bright reflection. I built up the opacity slowly with glazes uh, by keeping the previous layers visible. Let's make Bob's mask a little rougher since his head was rolling on the ground, so I painted some scratches on his head. This is a bit thin down in green, and I just do some random dots and small lines on his mask to imitate some rough uh, surface. To add some life to that pale blade, I glazed a really thin down blood reverse flash on the lower part of the blade while trying to avoid the edge highlights I previously painted. This will imitate that the blade reflects something brown in his vicinity, like some rocks, uh, dirt or maybe a building. Most of the Simon minis on the Kickstarter page got this red OSL effect on them. Like everything else in Papa Labors' painting guides, this is purely optional, but uh, this effect is quite easy to do. I use an airbrush to apply a glaze of word barrels red on the darker part of the mini. If you highlighted the banknotes previously, then go in with an angel green glaze first and then go for uh, word barrels red. Use small birds with the airbrush. My compressor is set to 1 PSA and the paint is one part thinner and one part paint. Since metal is more reflective than other materials, I glaze some word barrels red using a brush to enhance the OSL effect. I only use this glaze on the side of the blade that faces this red light source. Uh, I use uh, three to four layers. Then I use Evil Sun Scarlet, first with a base layer consistency to paint the edges of the swords and the uh, money stacks, but just as I did before, I only paint the edges that face towards the red light source. 
After that I use the glaze consistency and pull the paint to the same direction to increase the light's intensity. I continue the process with white dry the red and reducing the highlight areas in a narrow plane. Make little dots with Evil Sun Scarlet to add some more detail to the sword grips. This is a base layer consistency and try to be careful not to paint the leather parts. Uh, yes, Papa Laborts knows it would have been wiser to paint these uh, tiny uh, dots before painting the leather straps of the sword grip. But you guys don't watch Papa Laborts because he is smart. You guys watch Papa Laborts because he is handsome. Lastly, give a few layers of glaze to those white rider red highlights we previously did on the OSL effect. And there you go guys, that pool is ready for the table. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you'd like to see more Marvel Zombies content, please leave a like on the video, and uh, tell me in the comment section. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos, with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Body Dom, Trying to Paint Menez, Jonathan Mosner, Rulzak, Vlad D, Urtepel21, Paints and Games, and Joseph Abenheim. If you like to support the work of Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. If you need a little bit of extra help personally from Papa Laborts, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.